we want to go through the, uh, the new features and, and functions of the latest release that we released last month. Uh, my name is Martin Schoffler, I'm product manager of the SAP integration add-on. And um, so we, we have muted everyone. Um, so please, if you have questions, write them in the chat. Um, there are other colleagues uh, that will see them. And if you have time in the end, we can answer them on the air. If not, we will come back to you um, after the after the webinar. Um, so we will. So we have uh, quite a few things to talk about. So um, we will first talk about the more general um, features that we added to the framework that are available um, for all connectors, basically. Um, and then we go into more details on the connector specific uh, features and also on the features for the feed class integration. Um, so, but we're going to start with the with the with the core or framework um, features that were added um, to uh, that are basically of interest to everyone uh, using the the tool. So the uh, yeah first feature I wanted to talk about is the async API support. So you can now export async API specifications for your outbound interface configurations. So async API is a, is a emerging standard for how to describe uh, where events go, how they look like, uh, what is the schema of the event payload, um, things like that are a part of the async API specification. And in a lot of API management tools, you can already import them so that you get a better overview or in your typical API management tools, also have the event integrations that are available in your environment. Um, so currently, this is supported for outbound interfaces you configured using our uh, no code or no code interfaces using database views or the new payload design for extractions. Um, for custom extractors, um, it's not available yet, but we are working with different customers doing custom extractors for to see if we could enable it somehow and uh, make the schema available as well. Um, so next. Uh, Next feature is a new enhancement spot in our event trigger function module where you can now do things where you previously would need a custom uh, event trigger function module, um, like uh, translating the key from, from one set of key fields to a different set of key fields, like um, typical scenario is, for example, the available to promise um, quantity um, integrations we we have with a few customers where there are various uh, business objects that are triggering that interface, but in the actual interface for the data extraction, you typically need a certain set of key fields for the data extraction. And to get that, um, you can now implement just a body instead of replacing the whole uh, ACI trigger function module. Um, and of course, this also opens various other uh, use cases where you want to store additional info on the events in some kind of custom table or do additional things like that <coughs> when the event is triggered. <coughs> then, of course, there have been quite a few other uh, more minor improvement and fixes, but one I wanted to focus on also is the improved formatting options. So these are all for our generic database view-based extractions and formatting. But you have now improved ways to do table and field renaming. Um, for example, there's a new camel casing option so that you, if you have existing database views or um, have views that use the typical ABAP naming scheme with all uppercase uh, and the words basically separated by underscores, um, you now have an automatic switch to camel casing using the typical rules that, that are available there for basically uppercasing the letters after the underscore and then um, all uh, basically everything else is lowercased. 
So this is a, a new option that you that you can activate to get a better readable JSON uh, for the consuming um, side. There's also a new option to skip fields. So it was often the case that you had some 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 database fields that you needed for the joins if you use database views, um, but they were not relevant in your JSON output. So you can now skip those so that they are not even put into the JSON. Um, and most important, you now have an option to uh, influence the nesting of the JSON that is uh, created um, by the formatter. So if you have multiple tables joined together, it was always a little bit unclear uh, to the system what should be nested into which other table. And there was a re really um, brute force way of doing it, but now you can influence what should be basically the parent of, of each subtable. So you get a better better hierarchy control on the on the on the created JSON. So these features have been added to all the database view formatters we have. So there are uh, a lot of um, a lot of connector specific ones, and they all have these new features. Um, they should also work uh, the same uh, now. Uh, besides the uh, connector specific uh, parts of it, uh, because we um, basically consolidated the coding around those. But we also, while introducing the new payload designer, we will talk about in a minute, we introduced a new formatter that can handle all these things um, in one format function module. So this uh, can be used for all the connector specific formats as well as for a normal generic database view formatting and can also be used for the new payload designer based extractions. Um, so this is the new. New format that you should basically use first or try first before you choose some other more specific format. And all the new formatting options are also available uh, in that formatting function model. Um, yeah, I think I already talked a lot about the uh, the body and the trigger. So uh, just recap, it's mainly used or main use case was for key translation. So several use cases we had um, did require these key translations um, and now they can be done inside a body implementation and you don't have to rely on or don't have to replace the existing trigger. But there are also other use cases to store additional info on the events um, that was used by some other uh, use cases. Um, we saw in the field. So this now should allow you to be closer to standard um, by using just the body. And now coming to the new payload designer. So this is a new uh, core highlight feature that is available in the framework. Um, it is a new codeless way to define your, your extraction and your payload. Um, and it just relies on configuration tables on the uh, on the framework side, so you don't have to create any database view or any other development objects. So no no need for that. And you get a new UI um, that also integrates the formatting options and stuff like that. And this also allows us to uh, offer um, pre-configured payload packages. So Currently, they are in the works. They are not ready yet, uh, but they will be made available for download through our support portal. And they will come just as transport requests with these configurations in them. So um, it is basically an isolated transport for, for the configuration of the payload designer. And instead of showing just a slide, I want to quickly show you the payload designer in, in the SAP system. Um, just trying to find my where yeah, my SAP system is open. And there it is. So the the new payload designer it got a new uh, standalone tr transaction. 
um, where, where you can call it Azadev Design. And you, so initially you have to basically create your first one, or if you have imported ours, so you see there are a lot of this Asapio uh, slash Asapio slash in front. Um, so these are the, the standard ones we are working on. And the way these look like, you, you always have a payload design. That's just a high level information. What, what is it about? What, what is the application area? And then, um, so what we designed now for the prepackaged contest is typically a, a division into how big the payload is, what, what tables are included. So we can, for example, check the medium where we have uh, three tables. And you will have a join builder where you can um, where you can add the tables and create the joins in a more uh, user friendly way to just drag and drop um, the fields on each other. And what is also new with the payload designer, what was always an issue with the database views, you can now have outer joins as well. Um, so. It is a more flexible approach um, to that. And when you when you receive the, the pre-configured content, it will be like that that you can't you can't edit it here because it, it should stay as it is as pre-configured content, but you can make a copy of it. And I already did that for the sales order, so that you that we don't lose time here doing that. But um, if you have made a copy, you can totally edit it and uh, um, do whatever you, you like to it. So add new fields, because typically when we deliver it, only the key fields are added. So the pre-configured content basically only has the, the join conditions, which tables are used, how they should be joined together so that you don't have to think about that. But which fields are added, you can... Um, easily add new fields just by uh, choosing them from the from the tables. So, like if you want to uh, know some some additional info, you can just add them, and they will then appear down here in the field list. And you can uh, easily change um, the the names to some JSON readable format like that. You can use the skip field. You can reorder them with a sequence. And um, as before, via the field mapping, there's also the option to have some conversion class and method to determine the name. You can also add basically append fields to it that will be only filled when doing the formatting. So these typically get the data that, that the formatter gets, and you can give them the value for that field. Um, yeah. And same goes also if you have custom fields that you want to add that should have a default value, you can add them as well. Good. And then once you once you have that, you can also if you if you already use that somewhere, um, you yeah I used the name multiple times now, but it's not important now. Um, you can also check where you use it in your configuration. So this one is already used in some upbound object, um, and you can jump directly into the upbound object from the from the payload designer. And also the other way around, you have the payload view name and version here, and you can of course jump back from here to the to the to the payload design. Great. So this is a new codeless way to define your extraction and your 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 payload design. So um, looking forward to what you all do with that option, because it should cover a lot of use cases where previously the database views were not enough, and um, yeah, offer a very quick way to define a new interface. So just yesterday for a new demo, we we designed an interface from scratch in about half an hour. And of course, that is we knowing the framework and the, the tooling, but it shows that you can very quickly get up to speed and have a first payload uh, design up and running uh, linked to some events and um, testable in your environment. Good. Now, um, going into the more 
um, connector specific features. So um, there are a few. Mostly, I will focus on the on the fee class integration, but also there are some uh, some others like for one for Confluent and Kafka connector. Um, there's a big new feature of supporting the schema registry. Um, if you know Confluent or Kafka, you know uh, there is the option to have a schema registry where you define how the events, uh, how the payload looks like of your events, uh, what is the schema for them. And with uh, the new support for schema registry, you can now uh, provide a, a schema ID from the schema registry. And then when you load the data into the Kafka Confluent uh, environment, it will be validated against that configured schema or the schema that you that you say that you want to adhere to. And then if it also matches the one from the topic you send data to. So this is a good new addition uh, for everybody using the schema registry. Um, and uh, another option that you have in Confluent Kafka is that besides the payload, you always have a have a key field that basically identifies what object is that payload about. And previously, you only could have one field basically designated as a key field. Um, and uh, this, of course, there is shortcomings because some some data uh, objects are do have more than one key field. So now you can also specify multiple, and it will then produce a, a JSON object as a key. So you can use that as well in your Kafka environment too. There are various use cases like uh, compacting the topics and stuff like that are uh, is using the key, and it can be now more detailed than it was before. Um, then another new feature we are now all already switching to the to the SAP OEM versions. So um, the event enablement add-on for connecting the SAP Event Management BTP and the C class integration add-on to uh, do the process integration to C class. Um, uh, but starting out with event enablement add-on. Um, the event mesh added uh, last year sometime, they added the option to have certificate-based authentication when uh, when doing the OAuth authentication. And we uh, now also support that certificate-based authentication in our add-on. Um, yeah, please please check the, the documentation for details because you will have to download the certificates from the from the event mesh instance and stuff like that. Um, but so if you need that feature or wanted to use it, uh, now it's available with the add-on as well. Um, then coming to the uh, fee class integration, so there are quite a few uh, topics there as well. Um, for those that don't know the fee class integration, it is different than the event-based connectors that are more technical in nature where you define your own interfaces with the fee class integration. There, of course, is a process integration where a lot of the interfaces are uh, basically coming from fee class. So what can be integrated, what should be integrated. Um, so there's a lot more going on with actual content as well for the interfaces. And um, the, uh, the headline feature for, for the more functional users is a new integration dashboard, which will complement our existing uh, <clears throat> more technical monitoring that the administrators use um, by having a view on the um, on the actual integrated document types. Oh, perhaps quickly switching to a short view, so that the functional um, people in your team can now review. Okay, what was integrated? What was what is the status? Was it successful? Did it fail? What was the error messages and stuff like that? And you can search by your um, by your business object, basically, so by the purchase order or by the uh, timesheets um, that you have received, and to quickly get a more uh, a better overview from the functional side to see what has happened um, in the integration. Um, yeah, the, the new integration dashboard is also called by a new transaction, um, but please review documentation on it. 
Then we added an option to to upload your contracts from from the SAP side or the Alpine agreements with the services into the event hierarchy lookup into uh, inside fee class, so that you now um, get that pre-populated automatically with data from your from your SAP contracts. Um, and next feature is support for evaluated receipt settlement. So if you if you use that process inside SAP, where if you get a, a service entry sheet, you automatically create an invoice for it. So you don't wait for the supplier sending the invoice, but um, you you use a process where you automatically create an invoice for these uh, for these timesheets you get. Then this can be now achieved. So the invoice is then created on the SAP side and integrated into fee class. Um, instead of the normal process that would download the invoice from FICLAS and add them in, in the SAP system. Um, this, uh, with this process, it works the other way around. Um, yeah, jumping over the uh, screen for the integration dashboard. Um, we also, also as part of that, improved the invoice status integration. Uh, to get an additional back channel into fit class about the uh, the status of the invoices, um, we also added now uh, more general support for custom account assignment categories. So previously, a lot of customers use custom account assignment categories, but uh, so far it was always necessary to have some body implementation to have some custom coding to deal with that and to map for the right categories for, for fee class. And now this is more a configuration option and the, the standard integration handles then uh, the mapping already. No custom code needed anymore. Um, so that's an improvement. Um, if you use these custom uh, account assignment categories, and the new release also adds support for the longer buyer code um in fee class so fee class changed it from four characters to six characters and uh, as it's used in a lot of places inside the integration and in the different uh, integrated business objects uh, it took some time to integrate it also into uh, the integration add-on but now it's there so there's no need anymore to limit the customers to the four character bio code anymore um, and then more some uh, yeah more uh, uh, more improvements to how you do your projects and have more uh, more smoothness in the integration is one option. Typically, when you do a project with features integration, you have a one point in time where the coding goes into production, and then a second point in time when the actual uh, functional go live happens, and in between, uh, the system will already record a lot of changes that are typically it's configured to not send them to FeedClass yet. So all these recorded changes uh, are basically obsolete. Previously, there was a manual step to delete all those. Um, when you do the uh, the initial full loads for the real functional go live. And now this can be automated uh, via configuration so that when you do the full load, it will automatically delete previous or older um, change pointers that will, would be used for the incremental loads uh, that are not necessary then anymore. And uh, yeah, for the cost center integration, it was previously always an issue if the responsible user that is maintained on the cost center is not an integrated user with fee class. So the user does not exist on fee class side. Um, now there is an option where you can configure a default user for these cost centers that will be put into the uh, responsible user field when sending to fee class. Um, so you can make sure that all the cost centers go over without having to care if the if all the users that are on the cost centers um, as responsible users are actually integrated to FeedClass and are using FeedClass. 
So this was a, a very quick rundown on the new features. Um, there is more documentation around that, of course. There are also features we did not mention. So please check our release notes as well in the different places. So for the SAP um, branded versions, um, like the event enablement add-on and the inter uh, features integration, those are on the help.subtle.com pages for these uh, um, for these components. And of course, we uh, for the other uh, connectors, uh, all the documentation is on our documentation website. So please, please check that out. And also release information is also in our support portal. So direct customers from us will, will have access to the support portal. And there you can also download the new, the new releases and also all the corrections that we might have already made. So there are quite a few um, for the integration dashboard and also a few for the payload designer already. So you might want to check the, the download section um, in our support portal. Or if you're using uh, the SAP branded um, components, then please check for notes and uh, you will find the new downloads in the SAP download uh, center. And uh, for the event enablement add-on, it's just SP7, so Service Pack 7. Um, for FICLAS, as it is a process integration, it also has a FIC, uh, the feature pack tags on it um, because of some initial service pack that we had to do that were technical in nature. The feature pack is on level six, but the service pack is on level seven. Um, but you will encounter both both names when when downloading the FICLAS integration. So I think that's a, that's a wrap for the um, for the presentation. If you have any questions or want to book a demo or know about the additional new features, you can you can contact us. Um, I think today we don't have time for Q and A. <laughs> that's right. So we used our time uh, today in yesterday's meeting. I, I did uh, pay attention to the wrong clock, so we were ready early. Um, I think the recording will be available to everybody in the call, I assume, mm -hmm. and the yeah. these slides will be shared. Yes, um, exactly. I see that as a question already. Mm -hmm. So I would like to thank again everybody for attending today. Um, so chat will be open for a little longer, but uh, presentation is over now. And I want uh, for everybody in the European time zone, wish you a good day. Um, if you have somebody from the Asian time zones, good afternoon or good evening. Um, and talk to you soon. Bye, Thank everyone. You Thank you all. Bye-bye.